Good afternoon. Thank you for your attendance. It's a pleasure to have you here. This is a bit of a somber and sad occasion for me. I think a sad day for all Oklahomans and indeed all Americans. I learned late this morning of the passing of a true friend and my mentor, an iconic public servant and statesman, Henry Bellman. And certainly on behalf of all Oklahomans, our thoughts and prayers go out to Henry Bellman's family, as well as the Ballenbach family. And uh, as of this afternoon, I've ordered that all state flags fly at half staff. It's hard to, it's hard to really know what to say about Henry Bellman because he was such a great man who transcended politics and all of the normal stereotypes. Henry Bellman, in my estimation, was genuinely a great man. And in my view, I think probably the greatest man that I have ever known. He was a true statesman. And I think everyone would agree that knew Henry Bellman or served with Henry Bellman either here at the state capitol or at our nation's capitol, we agree that he was a statesman's statesman. He was a quiet but very effective leader. He was a real gentleman, probably the nicest man I've ever met, who always stressed deeds over words, action over discussion. He was one of those rare public officials who always did what he thought was right. Always did what he thought was right, regardless of the political consequences. Now, I had known of Henry Bellman for most of my life, but I first met Henry Bellman in person, in the flesh, at least as as best I can recall, in 1983, some 26 plus years ago, when I was working for then Governor George Nye. And Governor Nye uh, somehow successfully persuaded Governor Bellman to come back into public service as his interim director of the Department of Human Services following Lloyd Rader's retirement. Now, I remember seeing Governor Bellman in the governor's offices on that day in 1983 and meeting him for the first time and talking to him. And he treated me, even though I was, I was just a, a lowly staff person. I shouldn't say that because so many of my staff people are what make that office run so well. But Governor Bellman stopped as he was walking down the hall and turned to me and said, hello, I'm Henry Bellman, who are you? And we talked, I told him who I was, and he had known my father and my cousin and other members of my family, and he was genuinely interested in what I was doing and asked me how college was going. You see, Henry Bellman loved young people. He was a teacher, and he loved to impart his life's experience on young people. And it occurred to me way back when in 1983, as other leaders in state government gathered around for a meeting with the new interim director of the Department of Human Services, that Henry Bellman just stood taller than everyone else. Not necessarily in physical stature, but just in the way he carried himself, the way he acted toward others. He was so kind, such an inspiration. Well, in a stroke of luck, it just so happened that a year later, in 1984, Henry Bellman was teaching a political science course at the University of Oklahoma. I believe it was 84, I was a junior in college. It was a 
one night a week course for three hours, and I enrolled. And so I spent an entire semester, one night a week, for three hours, if you can just imagine, people would say to me, how can you listen to Henry Bellman for three hours? I mean, he's just so dry and, and almost monotone. And I can tell you, it was the most fascinating experience of my collegiate career. I mean, if you can imagine Henry Bellman for three hours, one night a week, regaling his students with stories and lessons from farming, from war, from public service here at the state capitol as well as the nation's capitol. It was a truly amazing experience. And, and I think what I saw during that experience was someone who had more common sense than anyone I had ever met. He wasn't the most eloquent speaker in the world. Of course not. True public servants rarely are, just like me. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, he had so much common sense, and I think that's one of the things that made him such a great leader. He always talked about bipartisanship and reaching across the aisle to build consensus, to find common ground and build solutions that really helped people. And he did it with such ease, it seemed, and such incredible common sense. I also remember, and grew to really appreciate over the years that Henry and I became great friends, that he had such a tremendous sense of humor. It was a dry, self-deprecating sense of humor, but nonetheless a great sense of humor. And I really think it was that experience in that political science class in 1984 that probably moved me more than anything else to want to help people, to want to make a difference. Henry Bellman was a tremendous inspiration to me and inspired me to want to help people. I, 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 I always said, I want to be just like Henry Bellman. Not in terms of the offices that he held, but in the way that he conducted himself. Quiet, effective leadership. The way that he treated others, regardless of their station in life, with such tremendous respect. And over the years, he's been a great advisor to me. Henry Bellman was an extraordinary man, a great friend, and a tremendous mentor. And I am so much the better person for having known him and listened to him. And all Oklahomans, and indeed all Americans, are better off because of Henry Bellman's quiet, steady, strong, and effective leadership. Rebellion. It's it's cliche to say, but it's so true. You will be missed, but not forgotten. God bless you and your family. I'll be happy to attempt to take any.